you want to be turning with me, I'm going to be reading from chapter 2 of the book of Mark. That will be the scripture that we'll try to use this morning. But I just want to say a few things before I start. That I've, I've thought about this and thought about this, and it's such a tragedy to get up out of bed on Sunday morning and come to a place of worship and never experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit living God that we serve. That is just absolutely, to me, that is just ridiculous. But you, I never heard and seen the like of people that say, well, I went to church, but it was so boring this morning. I went to church this morning, it's so dead. I'm going to tell you this morning, I believe that the trend is coming the way the trend is falling. That's what everybody wants. They want a sermon there, and they want to get out of here. And they want to go home. But I tell you what, when I come to church, I want to feel the presence of God. I want to know that my God is still alive. I want to know that my God is still on the throne. I want to know that somebody has got more power than I've got that I can call out on his name and he hears me. I want to know that. So uh, in talking about grandparents, let me just kind of throw this into you just a little bit. And, and, and grandparents and all, and of course... Neither of my grandparents got to come to this church, but I remember when we come over to this church in 1959, this church did not have padding where you're sitting in the pews. This church did not have air conditioner. They, those windows right there, when you flipped them handles and opened them, that was your air conditioner for about two hours on Sunday morning. That was your air conditioner and, and all. So they were coming. But I'm going to tell you, those folks came in. They loaded up this choir. They sung those hymns and they absolutely praised God with everything that was in them. They came in them doors and they said, this is the day the Lord hath made. I may have had a bad week. Devil made a, they may have given me a hard time but I'm going to serve the Lord this morning. And I'm going to tell you, it's just a choice this morning. And a lot of people's not making a choice or a lot of people is th saying, well, I want to just sit back and I want them to bless me or you to bless me. So now, they're in, now we're in the age to where it's like a cheerleading section. You've got to have a cheerleader section up here to inspire you. You've got to have a little light show. You've got to have all that. I'm going to tell you, there's no light show like the power of the Holy Spirit spirit of God when God's people get right with him and worship him in spirit and truth there's no light show that can outdo that I'm going to tell you this morning there's no light show or no uh, no uh, 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 praise team or nothing else or choir or nothing else can do that like the power of the Holy Spirit of God can so I'm going to tell you church is not a place that we need to come play we are just to hang out for an hour and then run to the house it's a place that we need to come to worship God in. And you say, well, I've heard that before, preacher. Well, you'll probably hear it again if I live long enough. You're probably going to hear it some more. Because I'm going to tell you, we need to praise him. And, and, and when I said, well, go about the windows and the air, our grandparents, our grandparents, Praise God in those conditions. Now we've got a closed up air conditioner. We've got sound here. We've got good sound. We've got good lighting and all. And we still are sitting back and just looking like, uh, looking like the darling boys on Andy Griffin like this at the preachers when they stand up to bring the message. And I'm telling you, it won't hurt you to, to, uh, uh, to say amen every once in a while. Pray for the preachers and the singers and get in the service. So that brings me to what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about it, and if I can, for a few short minutes and all. But when Jesus shows up, when Jesus shows up, I'm going to tell you, when Jesus shows up, something changes. When Jesus shows up, something happens. And so this morning, uh, I pray that before we end this service this morning, that Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit shows up at New Beverly Baptist Church today. I pray that they some miracles happen this morning. I pray that some people get changed, healed, delivered, set free, saved this morning by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, we need to get in the worship. We need to get in the praise. We say, oh, we come to praise and worship him. But I'm going to tell you, you need to put forth an effort before that that's going to happen. Amen. You can't let the one sitting next to you praise and worship for you this morning so we all need to get into it but anyway when Jesus shows up something happens I want to uh, 
read to you if I can, if you'll stand with me, chapter 2 in St. Mark's Gospel, in honor of God's Word, let's read it, and it says, Again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached, catch the word, he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him bringing one sick of a palsy which were bore by four. And when they could not get in the door... Uh, for the press, in other words, the place was full. There was no way to get him in the house. They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy laid. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins are be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why doth this man thus say, speak blasphemies? Who, who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of God, listen, hath power on earth to forgive sins. I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into the house. See what he did first? He forgave him of his sins. Second, he said, Grab that bed up and go down the road. And then it's immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never seen it on this fashion. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. We ask you to bless the remaining of this service. We ask you to bless the reading of God's Word, bless the whatever is said here this morning, and then, Lord, bless the baptismal service, and, Lord, just bless your people this morning that they can go away from here and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Be with those that are sick, those that are hurting, and those where death have come. We ask it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated if you like. Now, real hurriedly, let me tell you. If you go to chapter 1 in St. Mark, the very first verse says, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. No question about it who we're talking about this morning. Jesus Christ himself. Then if you drop down in verse number 9, it tells you about Jesus Christ being baptized by John in the river of Jordan. Going to be baptized this morning. Uh, this morning, Kayla is and, and anyone else that like to but going to be baptized Jesus Christ set that example the two things he left for us to do and that was to be baptized and to uh, do the Lord's Supper he said you do this in remembrance of me but he did this himself in verse number 9 then in verse number 12 of the first chapter now I'm talking about St. Mark uh, verse number 12 you look there where that for 40 days he was tempted by the devil but then you look in, in verse number 14 and said after he was uh, John was put in prison. Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. It's important that the gospel of Jesus Christ be preached and heard by everyone. It's important. Jesus Christ himself, he was setting up his ministry. He was starting his ministry. Then he began to pick some uh, disciples. And, and then it comes on down and it says that in, in verse number 21 that they went to Capernaum. And, and he taught in the synagogue. There he taught. If you look on down, he preached again. He taught. He preached. He healed. He delivered. He set people free. He made a difference in everybody's life that he came in contact with. This morning, it's not changed. Jesus Christ is not changed. He's the same today. He'll be the same until he comes back in the clouds of glory. He will be the same until he comes to take us home. And we need to get that in our thick head that Jesus Christ is still making a difference 
difference in people's lives that absolutely have no hope and have no way to get escape from what they're into. And so I want you to understand that. Now, it tells us then, bring, bring you up to it, and he heals some more. He cast out devils in some more and all. Now he's coming back to Capernaum. He's coming back into the same city uh, that he started in. He's coming back in there, and he comes in, and we're, here's what we find in verse number, uh, or in verse, uh, before I start, in verse number 1 and 45, he was this old boy that he healed uh, there. It said, he tell him, said, don't, don't go tell it. In 44, I'm sorry, see that you go your way and, and show thyself to the priest and said for the cleansing, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'll get it right in just a minute. Let me find my verse right here. It tells him, don't say anything. He tells him, don't to say anything. And said, uh, he told him to keep it quiet. But what happens in verse number 45, he goes out and he tells everybody he comes in contact with. I'm going to tell you something this morning. If Jesus Christ does something for you, if you are, are blessed, healed, delivered, set free, whatever the case might be, you need to go tell it. You need to tell somebody. You need to witness to somebody. That's what's wrong today. Jesus Christ is still doing miracles, but we're so ashamed to tell anybody uh, that Jesus Christ is doing it. That's just like in, when the election, I don't want to get started on that, but when the election was, Trump got elected, but everybody was ashamed to tell them they voted for him. Amen. And that's what the deal is today. Everybody don't want to talk about Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to talk about, I, I, I serve Jesus Christ. He saved my soul. Nobody wants to tell him about, because they're ashamed of it. We need to not be ashamed of the one that saved our soul and set our life in order that we may spend a place called heaven in eternity. We need to not be ashamed of him this morning. And so that's exactly what we need to do is we need to publish it much. We need to tell everybody that we come in contact that I'm a child of the king this morning. Not be ashamed to tell everybody that you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You say, well, I'm saved from a burning hell. I don't want to upset anybody. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't want to go to hell either. And because of Jesus Christ saved me, I'm not going to a place called hell. So I'm going to tell you the first thing about it is, or the first thing that we need to do is don't keep it a secret. That's the first thing when Jesus shows up and he does something for you. Don't keep it a secret. Tell everybody that you can. Tell everybody that you come in contact with and all. And, and that's exactly what happened was this one man goes and tells everybody then he comes back to Capernaum and then he's over here at this house and I don't know how big the house was but Jesus comes to the house now this one guy has told everybody and you can't even get in the yard so to speak of this house because of the crowds, uh, massive crowds of people. Folks look what if hundreds would tell people what Jesus Christ has done for you, look what the crowds would be in the local churches today. We wouldn't be having to feed people. We wouldn't be having to entertain people. We wouldn't be having to pay people six-figure incomes to get up here and turn flips to entertain people in the church pulpits with. If all the people, the children of God, would get right with God and get prayer and get to, uh, in their Bibles and get caught on the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit get strong in your church itself. I'm telling you this morning the power of God would draw the house full and it'd be running over. One old boy here that was healed, he told everybody he'd come in contact with. Now the house is full. A massive crowd that we find here has happened here. And I'm going to tell you, if God touches you, you need to talk about it. If he heals you, somebody needs to hear it. If he saves you, you ought to share it with somebody. If he delivers you, you ought to declare it to somebody. Again, one man did all this right here. So I'm going to tell you, first thing is, if Jesus shows up, up, don't keep it a secret. Yes. Tell somebody. That's the commission anyway. Go and tell. Go and tell somebody. Second thing. Second thing. When Jesus shows up, God speaks. Now, I've got two pages of notes on that, but I'll try to condense that down for you. I'm going to tell you this morning. When the power of the Holy Spirit is in the house, God will talk to people through his word of God and the Holy Spirit. He will speak to you. You say, preacher, what will he say to me? I 
don't know because I don't know what he's saying to you. He's not saying the same thing to Mike as he's saying to me. He's not saying the same thing to Clay as he's saying over here to Pap. He's not saying the same thing. But I'm telling you, we get right with God and we worship him in spirit and truth. And God will speak to you and direct your path this morning and show you what it is for you to do. Now, you say, well, preacher, I know what you're going for. You're going for, you want people for the buses, the nursery, the teachers, the, the, the trustees, the dig out. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I will not stand here and tell you not. But I'm going to tell you, that's the kind of people that you want in those positions that God has given them the leadership, or given them the inspiration, has told them that he wants to use them in that ministry. That's the people that you want to use. Because if you make somebody do it, it's not worth anything, and it's not going to amount to anything. So, when God... When Jesus shows up in the service, in the house, he'll speak to someone. And again, I don't know what he's telling you to do today. I don't know what in the world he's got for you to do. But I tell you this, if you will sit in church and you will pray for the pastor, if you will sit in your Sunday school class and pray for your teacher, and all, God will speak to you through the reading of and teaching of his word, and he will speak to you through the Holy Spirit and show you what it is he wants you to do. Now, some of you are scared to death to read the Word and study the Word to show thyself approved because you're afraid that God's going to show you something for you to do. But I'm telling you this morning, if you have a desire to see people helped in any way, then you need to get in his church and get in his good local church and get in his Word. And when he speaks to you, because a lot of people don't hear him speak. He speaks, but you're busy with what things of the world that you're fooling with. You're too busy texting on your phone. You're too busy on the Facebook. You're too busy. And again, by the way, you need to get on the Facebook and the YouTubes or Facebook and all that stuff and tell them what a good church you've got. You need to get on there and tell them. Everybody, I tell you what, if they don't like it, they're going to get on there and tell them. But if you had a good experience in your church today, and I'm not just talking about this church, everybody that be watching and all and listening, tell them about your church. Tell them if you experienced the power and the presence of God. Tell them that you felt God in your heart this morning when you uh, was in the building. Tell them that God gave you a word this morning, that he gave you something. He told you something that you could, should do and, and, and needed to do, that he'd done that for you. So you're going to hear a word from God. The second thing, he'll speak to you when he shows up. And as I said, I've got all kinds of notes on that, but I've got to hurry up for time purposes. But I'm going to tell you this morning, I believe before we leave the building this morning, God will speak to someone right here in this congregation. He will speak to you. And what you do with that, whatever he tells you to do, what you do with that is going to determine us what kind of blessing you're going to receive or what kind, not only what kind of blessing, but if you refuse to do what he tells you to do, you're going to be miserable if you don't do it. Amen. Oh, you see how quiet it is. It's good when you say, boy, prayer, power, presence of God. But when you say you're going to be miserable, about it, ooh, amen. Huh? We don't like that miserable part. Well, if you don't like it this morning, the word from God is do what the word of God says and the Holy Spirit tells you to do and get the blessing. Yeah. That's what I, my advice to you would be is get, do what he tells you to do. Sometimes I don't like what he tells me to do. I didn't like what he told me to do when he called me to preach. I didn't like it in one bit. Matter of fact, I argued for six months and told him I'd, he was wrong. But look who won out. And now almost 20 years later, I'm still preaching the Word of God. Surely there's a retirement package in here somewhere or another here, but I ain't seen it coming up, Mike. When the Word of God comes to you, do it. Receive your blessing. So when Jesus shows up, the, 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 he's got a word for you. Number three. I'm, I'm on three. I'm doing good. You'll, be, you'll get out of here by one. You that's visiting, you'll get out of here by one. Number three, when Jesus shows up, people get saved. People get saved. Now, you know, as a preacher, I like to see somebody get saved every Sunday. 
But realistically, if you've, got, if you've got a crowd of people that are saved, then we need to worship him in spirit and truth. And then we need to go tell someone that is lost and get them to come in that they may hear the word of God and get saved. But what's wrong is that we that are saved are not bringing in the lost. Bear with me here. We're not bringing in the lost. But look here. If he told you, it, I, or I told you when Jesus comes to the house, folks get saved. People can get saved anytime, anywhere. It doesn't make any difference. You can be saved at home. You can be saved on Monday as well as Sunday. It doesn't make any difference. When the Holy Spirit draws you, you can be saved. But listen to me. Listen to me. The, and I don't want to use the word odds are, but I guess that's the only one I can come up with right quick. But the thing about it is, odds are that you will be saved more so in a church where the Holy Spirit of God is so strong, where the Holy Spirit is flowing from breast to breast. I'm going to tell you, you will find out right quick by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're lost and you will determine in your heart, I need to do something about this situation. I need to make a decision this morning. I need to either get saved or get out. Now, I had a, a junior, junior Ricker used to, when the power of the Holy Spirit would get on him, he just run out the back steps, right, Junior? He just jumped up and run out the back steps and lit up a cigarette down there and stood till the altar call was over with. But then... At some point in time, he couldn't run from the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And he got saved. And he got saved. But let me tell you, when, when Jesus shows up, people get saved. The Bible tells us there that this old boy right here, what happened was, here comes this old boy in, and, and, and our story that I, like I say, that I read to you real hurriedly. But it tells us that there was four friends of his carried him down the streets to take him to this house. You say, well, it was a house. Well, I don't know whether it was a church house or not. It says Jesus preached in a synagogue first, but then it says a house. But this morning, this is a church house, okay? This is God's house, okay? So I'm going to tell you, if you got lost folks, you should have been bringing your lost folks to this church house this morning. So that they can... Jesus on the name of... Tell what you want